Good evening, friends. I hope you're all doing well. I am also fine. So today I'm going to discuss about Terraform. So what is Terraform? Terraform is a tool for infrastructure automation. So you can write your code and that code will be executed into your cloud provider like AWS, GCP, or Azure, and then the resources will be created, right? So this is how Terraform works. You can install Terraform on your local or you can in install or use Terraform as a cloud. Mm -hmm. So today I'm going to show you how you can use Terraform in your local machine and then how easily you can create resources with Terraform scripts. So let's get started. First thing you have to do is like go to terraform.io and then you go to download Terraform section. And then based on your uh, local machine, like operating system, you can choose either Mac OS, Instructions, or Windows, or Linux. I have Windows machines, so what I did is I just downloaded uh, this version, 64-bit. And then uh, you will have something like this. Let me show you. A moment, where is Terra from? Here it is. So you will have F exe file like this. So then what you have to do is like you need to go to your environment variables in your Windows machine. And click on environment variables and then you need to add a path. So that path will be the path of the uh, folder where the terraform.exe file is existing. Once you add this path, then you will be able to run Terraform in your terminal like this. Just a moment, it's starting. I run Terraform, and this is what I see. If you, the path is, if the path is not configured properly, you will see that something is wrong, or uh, Terraform command not found, right? So this is a very simple way to install Terraform in Windows. I am not going to show you for the Mac or Linux, but you can follow the instructions over there, which will be very easy to install Terraform. Okay. So let's assume that you have already installed Terraform. Now what? So let's think of a use case that you have to create a VPC, right? A VPC creation is quite a tedious work in terms of like, if you have seen my other videos, I, I have my videos given there. It takes around 15 to 20 minutes to create a separate VPC with private subnet, public subnet, you know, all those internet gateway, net gateway, so there are many, many things, routing. So you see, you have to private subnet, route tables, internet gateway, NAT gateways, right? You have to create a lot of things. But now today I'm going to show you how you're using Terraform. Like you can just write a script and create within five minutes, right? And it's very easy and simple. If you have just very little knowledge of Terraform, then you can easily do that. So let's go to the VS Code and go to that file. So what I'm going to do is like create a folder and then like uh, Terraform files and then examples and then keep it like the VPC and then create a main create.tf or main.tf, whatever you like, that's it. So I'm going to show you here. So each Terraform will, uh, will be running inside the like uh, .tf file extension. It needs to be either main.tf or you can create run create.tf, whatever you like. So uh, this is our main main script I just created. So the first part is the provider, like what is the my provider? It's AWS or GCP or Azure, whatever it is. And then inside there, I am going to have some uh, parameters like region, right? What region I'm going to create the VPC. 
the VPC I'm going to create is that a uh, Northern Virginia or what we call US East one. So that is the same region. If we expand here, then you can see what uh, possible regions are there like US East one, US East two, US East West one, West two, AP South one, blah, blah, blah. All those things you can catch it from there. So if you are in a different region, just choose the region name and apply here. That's it, very simple. Then uh, the create VPC. So this is, I'm going to create a module and the module source is Terraform AWS modules, VPC AWS. So this is, Terraform has already created some modules for uh, creating resources, which are commonly used, right? So those uh, who do not want to, you, you can directly use or write your code, but it's better to use some common use cases with Terraform modules. So this is one of the module Terraform uh, AWS modules. In the Terraform registry, you can find that. Uh, this The URL is registry.terraform.io. If you go here and then you search for, uh, there are all possible uh, Modules are available from the well-renowned cloud providers like AWS, GCP, Azure. Mm -hmm. So you can create your own module as well, but easy, these are all. Now let's go to AWS, right? Then uh, here, this is the Terraform AWS module. And then here we go to VPC. So Terraform AWS modules, VPC. This is the latest version, right? So here we are taking that file, Terraform AWS modules, VPC AWS. So how do I get that name? So you can see that Terraform AWS modules, VPC AWS, right? This is the name that I'm copying here. This is the exact same name. And here it says the latest version. So if I do not specify any version, then it will be taking the latest version. Okay. The next thing I did is that uh, in the same directory, like here, I created a variables.tf folder. So variables are actually, it's a kind of a like um, parameters that you wanted to pass to your uh, scripts. So I created a couple of variables here. So first of all, the VPC name. So you can, if you want, you can just directly hard code this name. That's up to you. But I wanted to make it a bit more flexible so that I can reuse this script again and again. For example, this is the VPC I, I wanted to create my project X. Then if I wanted to run it again, then it will throw me an error because project is X VPCs already exist. So if I run this script, it will create one VPC for project X, then I cannot use it. So I created a variable here to uh, just to give you a, a hint that if you use like uh, project Y, then it will be project Y, sorry. Right, you, you don't have to modify your main script. That's the beauty of using variables. Okay, so this is a variable I declared, VPC name, and then uh, I just give a default name, but you can override it as well. So let's assume this is the default name with project Y. So that I used here, name equals to VPC name. Okay, and then, you know, you want to give a CIDR. So each VPC will have its CIDR. If you go to the VPC details, then you will see the default VPC CIDR is like 172.31.00.16. So you wanted to have, you wanted to give a separate CIDR for the new VPC. So that is, I also created a uh, variable here. If you see variable CIDR and default value is 10.10.10.10.0.0.0 slash 16. So that is not conflict. You, you cannot use this one because this is already being taken by the default one. So I just have to use a different one. I use this one. This is my CIDR. Okay. The next part is uh, availability zones, right? Which availability zones you want to specify? So I have given like uh, US just 1A, 1B, 1C, 1D, 1E, 1A. So what is availability zones? Like if you go to each of the region, like region, this is the region. So each region has their own availability zones, right? So for example, US, US East 1 has almost 
one, two, three, four, five, six, six availability zones. If you go into different region like uh, Oricon, then you will see they have a number of different number of uh, availability zones. So if I go here, the subnets, then I will able to see what are the possible availability zones here. So for example, uh, yeah, US West 2 has four availability zones, 2A, 2B, 2C, 2D. So this is, this is a one-time configuration. If if you want, you can use minimum. Like I, I, if I want, I can remove this. But it's like if you if, if there is any six availability zones, then why shouldn't you use six, right? So you should create six availability zones in your VPC. So that's I defined in this variable availability zones as it is. And then I use this variable like this. There as it is there C A T. Okay, so this is how we call a variable, like you put a name where and then the name of the variable, that's it. So here I used something different is that apart from the variable name, I also added something here, like project X dash VPC. Mm -hmm. it, it is, this is optional. You, you can just use uh, where VPC like this, that is also fine. I just added something else. So, Maybe for simplicity, I also do the same. Remove this and yeah, make it simple, right? So, sorry. So everything is like same. Where VPC name, where CIDR, where HAS, right? Very simple. So you create the VPC name, you define the CIDR block, you define the availability zones, right? So then you are going to create a public subnet, private subnet. So I also define the variables here. So what will be the public subnets and what will be the private subnets? So I am in this available uh, CIDR zone. So 10.10.0000 slash 16. So now here I can create three private subnets and three public subnets. You can you can mix up this, like you can create more private, more or more public if you want. But for simplicity, I just create three. So how do I do that? It's like uh, 10.0.1.0 slash 24, then 1, 2, 3, 24, and then 101, 24, 24, 103, 24. The, you are very much flexible. You can use like 1, 2, 3 up to 255. Like I can create a new one here as well. Then dot o dot o dot o slash 24, right? That's how you can create. I will give you these two files with the video description. You can just copy paste things to, to avoid doing something. But if you are flexible, you have the flexibility to add more subnets, right? I just get one, two, three foot. Here, this value, you can move up to 255, like 103, you can go up to till 255. That is the highest range. Okay, so this is my private subnet. This is my public subnet, so I defined here. This is my private subnets, public subnets, and then NAT gateway enable true because I wanted to create a NAT gateway. Otherwise, your uh, instances that is running on the private subnet will not be able to have the internet access. So you need to have private subnet. The next thing is single NAT gateway. That means that you want to create only one NAT gateway, right? If you do not, like if you do not put this value, what will happen is that they will create NAT gateway, multiple NAT gateway for each private subnets like this is one net get uh, one two three they will get four but that that is not needed you can just get one net gateway and that is fully sufficient for your all those resources and this is similar one net gateway but you see actually these two values are almost same but for some reason i had to put these two all together if you do not give this that is also fine that also creates one net gateway but remember if you don't give if you 
omit this value, then it will create multiple net gateways. That is very costly. Like four net gateway, you have to pay four, four times. So remember that to put this true. Then these are tags. So I can get from true environment. Day. This is up to you. You can add more or less tags. And this is, I was linking this VPC to Kubernetes. So I added this tag, but this is optional. If you do not want this, then you can just remove that. That's completely up to you. Right? Okay. Now, uh, output.tf, right? So output.tf is like, what are the values you wanted to output? You wanted to show in the terminal when you run the Terraform apply. Here, I wanted to know the VPC ID, the public subnet IDs and private subnet IDs, right? So that's why I created three output. If you want more outputs, you can just add more, like the net gateway details or the internet gateway details or the routing tables, anything you want, you can just put in the output. So those will be displayed into the terminal when the command is executed fully. So then um, if you have defined these scripts, then what we have to do is like go to this folder in the terminal So I'm in this folder VPC and here I'm going to run Terraform in it first. So this is a one-time uh, initialization I have to do. So this will uh, kind of a, like load all those modules into the dot Terraform directory and also like add the required fields. So you have to run first time. This is only one time. Once you run this, then you don't need to run it again. Okay, let me clear my screen. And then next is Terraform plan. So this is kind of a like seeing what things it will be creating. So this is not running your comment into the cluster, but rather than it is showing you what it can create, right? This is a good um, visualization that what things will be created when the script is executed. Okay. So there are a lot of things will be created. That's what I was just going to show you because that's the beauty of Terraform that if you had to do this, all those things manually, it will take a lot of, lot of time. So you see, you will create a network SCL, you create increase outgress, you create a default route table, right? Default security group. VPC net. Okay, here you see VPC net zero. If you uh, just just to show you an example, if I don't enable this, then it will create multiple net gateways. One zero, one two, three four. So just to review what it will be created, like public internet gateways one, private routable one. Okay. All those things seems good. Okay. If you think all is good, then what you can do is like Terraform apply. This will actually now run your commands into the cluster. This is again showing you what will be created. If you agree, then type yes. Okay, it will take some time because it has to create VPC, NAT gateway, all those things, but you can just take relax and grab a cup of coffee or tea and enjoy this output.
the net gateway takes time so that's why you will see yeah. that this is the most time consuming part I have other videos for creating the VPC. So if you go to my channel and then search for VPC. You will, if you review these videos, you will see that this is like around how much time it takes. Even if I pause the, I created this around 21 minutes, right? <laughs> That's really very uh kind of like strange if you see set a public and private subnet in aws then it is also taking around 20, 20 minutes or something so if you have to manually create it you will see that this is the process is very the process is very tedious and very lengthy so now you using terraform it's done so <laughs> while i was stopping it's done let's go and see here i refresh Oh, sorry, I'm in mean the Oregon. Sorry. <laughs> I suddenly just scared. What what happened? It didn't create it, but then I realized that I'm in a different region. Okay, so uh, the region uh, I set in the code was US East 1. US East 1. So here it should be created, right? Project Y. Let's see. So you have created Project Y. Then you can go to the subnets. You will see that you have created almost, if I sort by VPC, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven subnets. Hmm. Route tables, you create one route tables for the project Y. My internet is very bad today. Maybe that's why it's not loading. Anyways, uh, it will load. I'm ready. Let me close these videos. So the point is that uh, Terraform makes things very easy. So if you just see that I have created all those resources and it's it took around just literally five minutes. Now, the beauty is that if I just change this region to a different one, then I can create the whole process again, again and again, right? So the process creation is very simple. That it is repeatable, right? You, you, you can just change the variables and like project Z, then you will have a different one. Project E or give it different type, then you can create a whole, all those things. Just to remember that the, in the same region, you cannot use the same CIDR block. Just if you are using on the same region, change the CIDR block, that's it. Otherwise, everything will be okay. <clears throat> My internet is, I'm not sure. Let's go to the internet gateway. It should create an internet gateway for me. What's wrong with my internet today? Uh, 
Okay, if you see the output, these are the outputs. Private subnet, public subnet, VPC ID. I don't know what is happening here. My internet is very, yeah. So this is our net gateway, project Y, US is 1A. As we told you, we just got one net gateway, but if we uh, do not enable this, there will be multiple net gateways. Make it false, there will be multiple net gateways. Net gateways. Then uh, what we'll have? Route tables. Let me refresh the screen. I don't know why it's not loading, but all other things are loading fine. Yeah, the subnet is working fine, but I'm not sure why this is not showing. Okay, let's give you time. So uh, here you have inputs. So using these inputs, we can do a lot of things. For example, CIDR, AZ is availability zones, right? Create database internet gateway route, create database net gateway route. All those things are here. So there are almost 200 input variables available, 200, and there are 109 outputs. So for example, uh, AWJ, database net gateway, database network ACL, route tables, all those things, database route tables, IDs, all those things are here. You can just choose one. And if you want to, to view it in the terminal, then you can use that. Even I can get the internet gateway, right? In the output, let's see. I go to the output and then output is okay. Let's try to run it again. Then you will see the new output. So uh, remember, if you run it multiple times with the same name, uh, it will not create new ones, but it will just give you the same uh, same output that the resource is already there, and this is the output. So what what you want? What if you want to create a new one, right? So if you want to create a new one, then just copy this folder with a new folder and then uh, change the variable names and run it. Okay, so this is the internet gateway ARN. So everything is created properly. So I hope this will help you to create VPC in AWS very, very easily, very quickly. And VPC is, I, I, I know it is very like tedious thing to create manually. I remember back back days I had to create those manually and uh, it was literally a hard thing. But now with Terraform, you can do it very easily. In the video description, I will give these uh, scripts and also you can go to this uh, Terraform registry to check the other possible sub modules or examples. If you go to examples section, you can see the examples here as well, like simple VPC, where is, I think, any code example given? Uh, let's see some, oh, here is the, here is the example. Here's the source code. I was just missing the source code. Here you can see that this is the example. Variables, versions, main.df. This is a simple one. You can just copy this and use this. So that's it for today. I hope you like this video. 
if you do please subscribe to my channel i will get more videos related to care from and will help you make your life pretty much uh, easier okay one last thing if you wanted to destroy it how can we del delete it right so process is simple you just run terraform destroy what we'll do is that it will destroy the resources that is created just one line command and that's it it will destroy everything that you created over there Okay, there's all those things that you do. I press yes, and that's it. It will be deleted. Okay, thank you everyone for watching this video. Allah peace. Assalamu alaikum.